Today we're gonna to break down the theory behind the classic ACDC rock riff, Back in Black. A song that I have affection for because my alternative grandmother used to use it to sing me to sleep as a young boy. But uh, yeah, basically, uh, if you don't know the riff, which come on, I know you know this riff, sounds like this. So, the main question is, what key is this in? We're gonna talk about this in a second because it kinda can be a little confusing at times. Now, uh, I think this is a master class in using the E minor pentatonic scale, right? Position one. Now, if you look at this, uh, the, the pentatonic in E would be open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three, okay? Now, we can make that entire first part of that riff with just these notes from this position of the pentatonic, right? So if we start, because these are all power chords, right? The way that Angus plays it, he doesn't play them as major or minor chords, he plays them as power chords, which, if you know what that is, it's just the one and the five, right? So like if E is the first note of the chord, the power chord would be 2A. So it starts off just like that. Now you can get the octave in it, so I have an E, a B, and another E. So I start off with the E. Now you can play an E minor shape, but he's not playing E minor. He's just hitting these first three strings. And then he goes to a D. Now, it may look like a D major shape, but he's not playing it like that. He's really just playing another power chord, a D, an A, D, E, F, G, A, the fifth of D, and another D. It may look like he's playing an A major chord, but he's not. That major third isn't in there. He's playing an A, A, B, C, D, E, an A, an E, and then another A, right? So the chords are all coming. You can actually see these chords inside of the pentatonic shape here, right? So the first chord, just like that, this open E, 2A, 2D, if we play the pentatonic scale, open three, open two, open two. All right, and then he jumps to here, this D. Again, if we go through that shape again, there's that D, there's the other one. And then the last one, the A, Okay, so we can think of it as just kind of taking little pieces of this super popular and easy shape to kind of make these chords, right? And then he does this little lick, which is literally just backwards through the pentatonic scale with a little bit of vibrato, actually a lot of vibrato on that one note, right? So that gives us the first half of it. Now the second time around, he does the same chords. And then we got. Now there's a couple different ways to play it. Some people play it up here. But I kind of like this way better. So I'm kind of getting one finger per fret on the E string, four, five, six, seven. Going seven, four, seven, five, seven, six, seven, seven. Now this is where it kind of becomes interesting because these notes aren't all in, uh, in the E pentatonic scale but they kind of provide some insight into which chords are actually behind this. Like we said, these are, the first one's an E power chord, an E five chord, you may see uh, if it's written down. Now, is it major or is it minor? It really isn't the way he plays it, but there is an underlying major or minor chord behind this. And this little riff gives us a little bit of insight into what that is. If we think about the notes in this riff, we start with a B and go to a G sharp, then a B to an A, then a B to a B flat or A sharp, and then a B, right? Now, the tonal center of this song is E, right? One way to kind of find out what key a song is in is uh, is where is the resolution? Where would you end this song if you had to? If you're like... Kind of seems like it ends fittingly on that E, which we'll get more to in a second. But the fact that we have this B note and this G note, or this G sharp note, uh, tips me off that we've got an E major thing going on here, right? If we just play the notes of the E major chord, we end up with an E, a G sharp, and an A. This is like an arpeggio of an E major chord, right? So if we had to choose a chord that sits behind this progression, I, I would be so presumptuous to say that E major would be the chord we would choose. You could do the same thing for the D chord. Even though we're playing it as a D power chord, if you had to stick a major minor chord in there, what would you pick? Would you pick a minor chord? Or would you pick a major chord? I think you'd pick a major chord, right? And then same thing for the A. Would you pick a minor chord? Or major? 
Mm -hmm. Right? I think we can all agree that that would be a major chord. So the major chords behind this, or the chords behind this riff, are going to be E major, D major, to A minor, and then an E, or not, I said A minor, A major, right? So then, uh, then you do a minor pentatonic lick over it, right? So what, what's going on here? We've got minor pentatonic with major chords. Well, the sound of the blues is the minor scale played over major chords, right? So even though we have an E major chord that is kind of like our tonal center, if you will, we're using notes from that really bluesy uh, pentatonic scale. So we're playing E minor pentatonic over an E major, a D major, and an A major, and that kind of gives us that really bluesy sound. Now, if you watch some of the other videos I did on like finding out what key you're in, you'll know that diatonically, like in the major scale, there are uh, only three major chords and three minor chords, right? So uh, a good way to find out what key you're in is you take the three major chords, E, D, and A, and one of these is going to be the first degree, one is going to be the four, and one is going to be the five. If you don't understand what that means, I will link you in another video to kind of like explain the one, four, and five better. But a dead giveaway uh, when you find two major chords together is that they're the four and the five, right? So which two of these chords are together? E, D, and A. D and E are letters right next to each other. So D is the four, E is the five, and A is the one, right? So now if we think of it that way, we can think of E to D to A as a five, four, one progression. But the interesting thing is, when we think about it that way, if we were to resolve on the one chord, which is where songs usually resolve, it sounds like this. There's no resolution there, right? So what's going on? Because that tonal center is E, it kind of leads you to believe that E is in the key, is, is in the key of E, right? So a lot of people would say that this song is in the key of E, and I'm not really gonna argue that. To me, how I'm kind of perceiving it, I, I think you could make a better case that it's in uh, E mixolydian, which would be the fifth mode of A major. So we're using the chords of A major, but it's so heavily E-centric that it's E's kind of mode within A. You know, you could say that, I don't think you would be wrong, but the interesting thing about that is if we take the notes of E mixolydian, right? Like I always think in shapes, right? So I would start with uh, the seventh fret on the A string is E. And then I'd play that right there. We could think of that flat seven as being a D, right? And that's kind of like a very prominent note in this uh, thing too here, right? So. I kind of think it's in, it's in E mix lighting. You could say it's an E, whatever. I mean, if you really get hung up on like what key power chord type songs are in, I think you probably have some different issues that you might need to talk about. But again, in the key of A, in the key of E, whatever. It's in the key of rock and roll is the real answer to what key the song is in. Great riff, it uses an incredible amount of just kind of power. And I think a lot of that stems from that minor pentatonic or just that pentatonic uh, shape. So, you know, if you want to kind of like incorporate this and in maybe like your own playing and stuff like that, just kind of mess around in some pentatonic shapes and try to make pieces of chords out of that. Because so much of this is like, it sounds like chords and a riff. But I almost kind of think of it all as like one and the same. Like the chords I think are almost just as important part of the riff as the lick is. So, uh, so here you go. If you have any questions, please uh, let me know. And also give me some suggestions on what maybe you want the next riff deconstruction to be. Thanks a lot.